You ever played Dungeons and Dragons when you were a kid? Did I play Dungeons and Dragons? You huge. played D and D? Oh my God, I was obsessed. I met Gary Gygax, man. Really? Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons is the shit. I think everyone and their mom has at least heard the name Dungeons and Dragons before, and I think that's a pretty big deal. I think society gets nerdier and nerdier as the years go on, and I think we've moved past the stigma that only stinky, sweaty, pig-disgusting geeks play D&D. The image is like of like sweaty dudes in a basement, which is like not always the most fun place to be. Unless you are a fucking idiot. So now I feel like I can safely say that D&D is just the best game that you could ever play. Ever. So first, you might ask me, what the fuck is Dungeons & Dragons? What, like, I've heard about it. What exactly is it? How's it work? Alright, so Dungeons & Dragons is a game where friends get together, create characters, and roleplay as those characters in a world constructed in part by the Dungeon Master, or DM, and in part by the player's imaginations. Shouldn't there be a board or some pieces or something to Jenga? No, no, this is a role-playing game. It takes place entirely in our collective imagination. I tell the story and you make choices in the story. Players are given conflicts and it's up to them to come up with ways to solve these conflicts in any way they can imagine. But there are rules. You can't really say like, oh, I roundhouse kicked the goblin's head off and then it just happens immediately. You can still try to do it, but you have to roll a die to see if you succeed. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a game if you just did everything you wanted to do without failure. Now, if your character is a level 10 monk with 20 strength, and you're equipped with the boots of Titan power, then your role's gonna be easier than if you were a wizard with a nine in strength and you focus more on spellcasting. The wizard's gonna be better at other stuff though. And you know that because you're making your character with an idea of what you want them to be good at. Do you wanna play a rogue who prefers to talk his way out of conflict? Put some points in charisma. Maybe summon intelligence so you can get some extra skills. Maybe you wanna be like a nimble combatant who avoids the damage outright by dodging rather than absorbing it through armor and shields. The best example of this that I've seen in media is from Community's first D&D episode. It's from season two and it's called Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And it's pretty good if you wanna get an idea of how the game works. An arrow flies through the air almost hitting the tower top. Six goblins are running towards you from the tree line, drawing daggers. Oh, I attack them using my additional notes. Why do people enjoy games like Elder Scrolls? You know, Skyrim and open world adventures. Because you think you have the freedom to do whatever you want. But that's bullshit because you still have weird arbitrary limitations. You can't do whatever you want. You can't go wherever you want. You're super limited. That's how video games are. I mean, you can't really shit on them for it. That's not really fair. It's gonna be like that for a while. What if I told you in D&D, you can just do whatever the fuck you want. Like anything, anything you can think of. Kanye the Giant slaps that bitch. Oh! Kanye the Giant attempts to slap the bartender. Here. The bartender is half hobbit and very nimble, so you're going to have to roll an 18 or above to hit. 20. Blip. Slap that hobbit's dick off, yo. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that they're super into the idea of D&D, but they don't really know where to start or how to play or anything like that. And you know, I remember when that was me. But I'm afraid some of you guys just think you're not into D&D just based on the concept alone. And I know not everything is for everyone, but everyone who likes our fucking content should at least give it a try. All right, first of all, for those of you who think you don't like D&D, but you never tried it, what if I told you that you already like it? Why do we like shit like Lord of the Rings and Firefly? Just to, you know, pick out two random examples. There are distinct characters interacting with each other, going on adventures. Sometimes these adventures are large scale. Sometimes they're smaller, more grounded adventures, and they let those aforementioned characters express themselves and continue interacting with each other. I bring up these two examples because I feel like they encapsulate exactly how D&D works. And if you like either of these, you have no fucking excuse. Sometimes when you're watching a show or a movie, you can tell that the people who made it are really into D&D. It just shows in their storytelling. Other times you can tell because it's like insanely obvious, like they don't even try to hide it. Then is Flame Princess evil or maybe chaotic neutral? She's evil. Do you think if a good guy really liked her, could he change her to good? Well, there'd be penalties to her experience if she acted out of alignment. D&D is in everything, and you'll start to see it once you play more. Also, I'd definitely go ahead and say that this game is really for everyone. There's a lot of diversity in D&D, and they don't hide it. In our current D&D podcast, we have an Egyptian elf who does martial arts, a woman who lives underground who wears goggles and talks to animals, a wizard who wants to build robots, and a dignified aristocrat who belongs to an evil cult. And you know, despite all that, I'd probably say that our game is pretty standard. D&D is like the best game for getting closer with your friends and building on these moments. It's basically like the opposite of Mario Party. It's like a breeding ground for inside jokes and like personal memes. I've gotten to know a lot of people better just by playing D&D with them. Now, if you don't have any friends, that's fine. 
Many of you might have a local game store where people play like Magic the Gathering and shit like that. Now these places also usually have a D&D league where you can walk in with a character sheet and just go to town. Now sometimes it's not really the most in-depth experience for D&D, but it's definitely a good start and it can be a lot of fun, especially if you've already tried D&D and you want to get a different flavor. The good thing about doing this in a store is the fact that these dudes want to sell you stuff, so they're going to help you out. And all D&D players want to create new D&D players. I mean, that's why, that's why I'm making this video. You can also go online and find a group. Now, Tabletop Simulator, for one, has a lot of good ways to group up and find people to play these kinds of games with. If you already have that on Steam and you use it a lot for any kind of like tabletop games, go ahead, hop on, try to find some people for D&D. Now, if you're broke as hell and you can't get on Tabletop Simulator, that's totally fine too because there's lots of free applications as well. Roll20 is easily the best one. It's super customizable, very easy to use. You don't even really need to try very hard to sign up. It's like super easy. Email, password, done. They don't even like ask for your confirmation. They don't, they just don't care. They just don't care at all. Now, another really cool thing about Roll20 is that you can play with people from all over the world. So if you have a lot of friends and you guys really want to start playing, but you don't really live next to each other, you can actually go online and it feels like you're sitting at the same table. Now, if you haven't picked up on it already, this is a game where you actually need at least one other person to play with. But hey, say you have like a significant other, a boyfriend or girlfriend, or like a roommate or a best friend or something, and you guys just want to play together. You don't have any other friends that you're that close to, and you just want to do it, you and them. But hey, that's totally possible too. I mean, honestly, I've played a lot of like solo games with me and another person, and they're such a unique way to play that in a lot of ways they can be more intense than playing with a whole group. When you're sitting at a large table of your close friends, usually a lot of dramatic moments in the storytelling of D&D can kind of get lost with people making jokes and shit. If it's just you and another person, it's a really intimate and intense situation. It could create some really terrifying and stressful moments. But, but, but Marcus, I don't have anything to play with. I don't know how to play and I don't know what to do. Okay, you know what? It's fine. Yeah, this game's been out since before most of us were born. It can be kind of daunting. Yes, there are a lot of books. A lot of books. A lot of books. But recently, Wizards of the Coast made things a lot easier for new players with the fifth edition of their game. I'd legitimately say that all you really need to play D&D right now is the most current player's handbook, sometimes called a core rulebook with other games, and some dice. Any dungeon master worth his weight in geldings goes nowhere without his 20-sided die. That's gonna be a D4, a D6, a D8, a D12, a D20, and two D10s. Now this is gonna be true for mostly any RPG you wanna play. You wanna play the Star Wars game? You just need core rulebook and some dice. Now once you got all that and you wanna make some characters with your friends, you gotta find out who's gonna be the DM. Usually each group has at least one person who wants to do it, and if you're the one who's getting everybody into it, it's probably gonna have to be you. But that's fine, because being the DM is the best thing ever. Some people really feel put off by the idea of being the DM, you know, running the show. It could be kind of intimidating. Some people feel like they can't really have fun because you're not really playing the game with the other people, but they are oh so wrong. The DM is playing, and they're actually playing more than the actual players. You're playing as the heroes and villains that your friends are gonna encounter. You create the plot and you watch as they struggle to solve your puzzles and survive the dangers that you create. If you really wanna figure out how it's done, all you gotta do is watch some podcasts or shows. Chris Perkins is a really good DM and he has a lot of shows that you can watch for inspiration. You can watch Dice Camera Action with like Pro Jared and Holly Conrad. That's a pretty good one. Or you can go back and watch his Penny Arcade stuff with Acquisitions Inc. Now, if you suck at coming up with adventures and dungeons and stuff, just grab a pre-existing book and go from there. There's a lot of them right now. It'll do a good job at teaching you how to do ability checks and how to stat monsters or gear. Most importantly, most books teach you how to deal with players doing unexpected shit, which will happen almost every game. Now, one day I feel like I might make a video on how to start as a beginner dungeon master because I remember when I was doing it and I had no idea what to do. But, but Marcus, I'm poor! I'm poor! I'm short on cash! I just want to play without spending all that money on books that I'm not even sure I'm gonna like! You know what, that's actually a very reasonable concern, and Wizards of the Coast already put it into account. I'd say the low-end alternative is gonna be this guy right here. This is the starter set, and most of the time you can get this thing for under 20 bucks. Now it comes with a lot of shit. It comes with dice, a little bag of, little bag of cute little dice, all the ones I mentioned, pre-made character sheets if you really can't figure out how to do it yourself, which is, you know, not a problem, a mini version of the core rulebook if you want to make the characters yourself and read about how the rules work, and a starting adventure with very detailed instructions on how to run the game. Honestly, if you just want to give the game a try, just get this thing. If you really don't want to drop that much cash right away, go ahead and grab this and it'll help you and all of your friends. Best option. Highly recommend it. But, 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 Marcus, I said I was 
car. Like, I don't have any money. I can't spend anything. I want to try it for free. Okay, Jesus Christ. Fine. Okay. Listen, I understand. Not everybody has a lot of cash. And I fully believe that Dungeons & Dragons is a game that anybody can play. Rich or poor, doesn't matter. Now don't tell anybody I told you this, alright? This is a little secret of mine. Let's deal with the book first. Just fucking Google it! Now, it's way less convenient than having the real thing. You can't really search for terms very easily. As for the dice, guess what Siri can do for you? Siri, roll a d20. Rolling. It's 17 this time. Siri, roll a d100. Rolling. Okay. Six. You don't even have an excuse if you don't have an iPhone, because most smartphones have free dice rolling apps. You can even Google for sites that do the same thing. Now if you want to spend money, you don't really give a shit, you know you want to get into this, go ahead, go fucking crazy. The books and miniatures and dice are all things that you can use in the future. I have books from more than 15 years ago, and I still use them. Now since this is a game that works off of you and your group's mindset and participation, it also means that the game is only as complicated as you want it to be. If you don't like the idea that wizards need to write in their spell book every day or collect materials to cast spells with, then don't do it. Fucking get rid of it. If you can't come up with an overarching story with connected pieces and everything, everything that the characters do matter, then don't do that. Make your friends like the stars of an episodic adventure anthology show. Nobody's gonna be over your shoulder forcing you guys to follow the rules if, if you don't want to. I don't know, like I said, D&D is my favorite game ever. Like, ever. I love video games. If you guys couldn't already tell, I like video games a lot. But D&D is still my favorite game to play. I seriously want nothing more than for more people to be into this game. Now, if you guys have any questions about starting the game, there are countless resources by people like me who just want to make the world a more fantastical and creative place. So if you're interested, you just gotta go outside, make some friends, or just have fun with the friends you already have. Excelsior!